Hello, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our uh, Wednesday webinar. Um, today we will be uh, excuse me. Today we box functionality within Dynamics GP. Um, what the giant what lockbox is is if you have a lot of checks or payments that you receive, uh, perhaps from an outside source, uh, it's a list your bank generates. Um, maybe you import from another system here, this can easily bring in your checks and cash payments into Dynamics GP. And we'll kind of go through the setups uh, and a basic run through. All right. All right. My name here is Scott. I am a consultant here with the IS. I've been here for uh, almost four years now. Um, so if you do have any questions here, you do have the, my contact information or office number, just ask the receptionist for me, or uh, you can certainly email me directly, scott at iscorp.biz, and I'll be happy to help you. And in today's agenda here, we're kind of going through the lockbox uh, setup and how to do a basic processing. And so we'll be spending most of this here within GP itself. All right, so within GP, the lockbox is under your sales here. So over here, if you come to sales or set up on cards, uh, it is just lockbox. Uh, or you can come up here, lockbox, or excuse me, cards, sales, lockbox. We'll bring you to the same menu here. And what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new one here. I'm just using the Fabricam uh, data here within GP. Um, and so Uptown is one of these here. So this is going to be what I get from uh, Uptown. Uh, bank here. And just go through and fill out the fields location of the lockbox file here. This is where it's going to save that file. Or you're going to save it here. And I have it just saved uh, to my desktop here. Um, this is just kind of a sample that I have done up. Um, shows a bit of information, and I'll kind of go through some of the other fields that are available here, but um, this is kind of just the basics to get us started here. We can certainly customize this depending on what your bank sends, um, if they send different for, say, wire transfers, paper checks that are uh, cashed and deposited. Um, we can certainly develop one for each of those as well here. Um, it's a highly customizable little tool here. Uh, the file formats, um, I don't know if what you saw was... Uh, what I had done here, but mine was just a comma delimited file. And if it's single line or multiple line here, and it's just single line per transaction here. So then we want to view row one here, and this is going to kind of show us the data in there. So value in row one maps my customer ID. So you kind of come down here and click. You'll see it updated automatically here, the field to field one. And that is customer ID, and we have to just map out all of the fields here. Deposit date. One thing to note here um, is the deposit date. It does show the format here: month, month, day, day, year, year. It uses the uh, standard uh, American two-digit uh, formatting here. Uh, so if you're getting like an Excel spreadsheet where it truncates it, um, you may have to change that cell format to be. Uh, Type uh, that has the leading zeros on your month and days in order for that to produce properly. And we just kind of keep clicking here. Uh, this is uh, the bank account number. The routing number. Oh, wrong field, I apologize here. Uh, check number. And then the check amount. Okay. It can tell us what the lock block apply method is. It's none. Uh, due date, oldest document, oldest invoice. 
Um, so you can tell how Luckbox how you want to apply it here. Um, decimal places on the amount, on the check amount field here is two. Uh, instead of you. Uh, the omit records, if you have headers or footers that are admitted, that are sent from the bank as well, we can tell the tool to omit those as well. Um, but mine, like I said, is just a very simple uh, data dump here that I've well generated here. So we're just going to go ahead and save this. And then what we are going to do is import this here. So if we go to transactions under sales, we have lockbox entry. So it is going to ask us for a lockbox ID. Uh, it should default to where that lockbox is saved here. I'm going to put it into a batch here. As you can see, it automatically says cash receipts entry. Uh, the posting date is pulling from the system. It automatically pulls in the checkbook ID from the, from the lockbox setup here. And then, little unintuitive here, um, but rather than hitting save or anything like that, we actually went to the transactions button. Um, I know, like, if you're in the batch edit window here, this will show you the transactions in a batch. But what this will do here is this is going to break up a little process window here, is it's bringing in that data for us and it's showing the transactions here and so there are some little uh, symbols next to them here um, or it'll say match with the customer fully applied match with the customer not fully applied meaning there's some out there um, not yet match with the customer or valid exchange rate couldn't be found so if you have um, if you're using a uh, multi-currency that could uh, if it's not matched that can cause some issues um, a lot of times here, like I said, this is just a demo, but a lot of times you'll get it from a customer with their name on it because they won't have the same IDs that your bank may use. So a lot of people will match customers. So if it doesn't match exactly as it is in GP, it'll cause issues. But what you can always do is come in here, click on reset customer ID. It's going to go back out while you select a, select a different one here. And that will help match up, say, for example, um, it says Aaron Fitz Electrical. Say the bank has it as Aaron hyphen Fitz. It, um, obviously, it won't match in GP, but you can come in here and reassign it. Um, check is applied to more than one of the customer's invoices. Um, just kind of gives you a heads up. Um, and then when this is done, we want to click on Create Batch. And then that will simply close out that window. So what we want to do then is we're going to come over here to our receivables batches. Well, our batch ID, lockbox demo. Showing two transactions, uh, single use, uptowns. It still has all that information. We can come in. View our transactions. Uh, there's the one from Advanced Paper, Aaron Fitz, so it functions just like any batch. And then when we are done, we can go ahead and post this. Whoop. My, my apologies here. Mockbox demo post. And then it'll bring up all of your posting reports, uh, just like you'd manually entered in all those cash payments here. And so then within GP here, we should be able to scroll down here and see that payment that we had done. And it'll function just like, And here we are down at the bottom here. I'd run this a couple of times here uh, just to make sure everything was working here. Um, but there are transactions. So it's just like any cash payment. It's just a really quick and easy way to bring them in. Um, it's a lot more intuitive. Um, and one nice thing I do want to note, um, I know some people may use 
configuration manager, which is one feature that I did kind of like here is you can have it open while it runs. Um, if you notice, I didn't close this. So if it comes up with any errors, you can just uh, click over here and save. You don't have to constantly open, save, and close out the files there. And then there's one other thing I would like to show you on this here. We're going to switch back over to the cards is lockbox bank details. Um, so if we pull up the customers here, uh, we'll pull up Aaron Pitts because this is one of them. Um, I did not enter these. And perhaps I should have showed you before, and I apologize, I didn't. But it will automatically create these records for each of your customers. Um, we also did advanced paper, and there's the one that we had just done. Um, that one was not in here. That was one I created for the demo to do a multi-line, uh, well, not multi-line, but multiple transaction import like that. Um, and it'll create that uh, lockbox bank details here. So we'll show you the bank account number and the routing number of those uh, deposits that were used as a way to also track that information within GP. Um, all in all, it's a very handy little tool if you do a lot of like cash transactions. Like I said, if you get, uh, if you wire transfers come from the bank rather than manually keying them, um, if you get an, uh, say, daily export, weekly export, however often you can uh, get that set up, uh, you can do it that way. Rather than manually entering every cash payment, you can enter just everything into a spreadsheet um, and then import them all at once. A very handy little tool um, for those of that do a lot of the uh, cash payment entries here. Right, so, like I said, just really simple little tool. Uh, it is a pretty handy one. Um, uh, I know there's a couple of customers that we have that do use it and they they love it. It's simple, it's quick. Um, don't need integration manager or anything like that here outside of that. Um, and so with that, like I said, it's just kind of the basics here. Um, like I said, if you'd like help getting this set up, creating those lockbox uh, formats, um, definitely let us know. We'll be certainly more than happy to hop on with you, kind of walk you through it or do it for you here so you can make sure that when you're importing, everything's getting imported in correctly. Um, so I guess what we'll do now here is we'll just go ahead and open this up to any questions that people may have. All right, I am not seeing anything come in here, so it looks like we're finishing about uh, 15 minutes early here today. So I'll go ahead and um, let you have that up. Oh, question just popped in. Give me just a moment here to read, to check this. Uh, we are challenged with getting the format to work through with uh, the lockbox. Um, Iris, if you want to shoot me an email, uh, again, my email is uh, scott at is Corp.fiz. Whoop. My apologies here. I copied my slide into my slide here, a little slide section. Um, if you want to reach out to me here, um, what I'll what I'd be happy to do is take a look at with you. We'll have to see um, what challenges you're getting from the bank. If the bank's able to get you something, um, see if it's a format that we can do some quick modifications to to pull it in. Um, or if we have to get it set, uh, or if it's like challenges just getting it from the bank. Um, I don't know if there's a uh, if you have a web tool um, that you can export out to a certain file format um, from just the online uh, portal. Um, but if it's within GP, it, but even if it's with the bank, we'll be ha I'll be happy to help you any way that we can, Iris. If you just uh, want out, reach out to me here. All right, I am uh, not seeing any more questions after that. If you do have any after uh, this, um, those of you that have like test companies or Fabricam installed, uh, those are fantastic ways to play around with. Um, you're not gonna break any of your live data. Um, that way you can get your process and your format down there. We can certainly, then it's just a matter of moving it out to production and your live companies here. We can get that up and running for you. And again, that is all stuff that we are happy to help you with. And if you have any questions, on Lockbox, um, Dynamics GP, or if there's anything you need our help with, um, please do reach out to us. I'm going to collapse my webinar menu. I don't know if you can actually see that on my screen. Uh, again, there's our number. Uh, my direct email is scott at icecorp.biz. 
uh, if you do have any questions or if you get like an out of office response uh, when you reach out to me, uh, support at iscorp.biz is our general support box. Uh, and those cases go out to the next available engineer here to, or the next available consultant to help you. All right. With that then, everyone, I would like to thank you all very much for joining us here today. Uh, what we are going to do is go ahead and give you back uh, 15 minutes of your day. I hope they are wonderful, and we'll see you next time on Wednesday webinar. <laughs>